G'day there, welcome to another episode of the School of Elijah. Um, I've got some good prophetic words for you today, but um, it's going to be a short, sharp video. And at the end, I'm going to share the word for today, the prophetic word for today. Um, first, I want to start off with a tweet that I sent last night uh, on School of Elijah Twitter account. If you're interested in following that account, you can you can find the link to it on followtheway.online. Um, go there, there's uh, links to social media. You can uh, connect with me there, send me a, a word of encouragement. Um, but what I, what I tweeted last night was, Revelations of God are one of the most amazing things. To actually receive information from another dimension that can change your life forever. And, uh, you know, when you think about it, it's so amazing that we can connect with the supernatural, with another dimension, the kingdom of heaven. You know, the kingdom of heaven is within and the Holy Spirit is within and our teacher. And we're connecting with that spiritual dimension and getting information, getting words, getting pictures, getting um, uh, illumination from from what God is is saying, so um, encourage you all to um, be seeking this revelation. And um, one thing that, that God's put on my heart is just to be shameless about plugging my book, The Illumination. Uh, in this, you'll find seven keys to receiving revelation. Um, you can get this at Amazon.com. You can download it as an ebook for about a dollar. One of the things I say in this book is that there's, if there's only one thing you get from this book, seek to have a revelation of Jesus Christ every day. And that is so powerful, so true. Um, some of us have this idea of Jesus and we're stuck in that idea. We're not letting it grow. We're not letting it be fresh every day. You know, I remember seeing this uh, funny movie called uh, Tell a Till I get a night, that's it. Um, where the main character, um, Ricky Bobby, is saying grace with his family. Shake and bake. Dear Lord baby Jesus, we also thank you for my wife's father, Chip. We hope that you can use your baby Jesus powers to heal him and his horrible leg. It smells terrible and our dogs are always bothering with it. Mm. Dear tie into Jesus. Hey, uh, you know, sweetie, Jesus did grow up. You don't always have scarring babies. It's a bit odd not putting a cradle of babies. Look, I like the Christmas Jesus best, and I thank grapes. When you say grapes, you can say the grown of Jesus, the teenage Jesus, or bearded Jesus, or whoever you want. You know what I want? I want you to do this grace good so that God will let us win tomorrow. Your kind of Jesus. Your golden fleece diapers with your tiny little fat balled up fist pawing as a man. He had a beard. Look, I like the baby version the best. Do you hear me? I win the races and I get the money. Ricky, finish the damn grace. I like to picture Jesus in a tuxedo t-shirt because it says like, I want to be formal, but I'm here to party too. So I like to party, so I like my Jesus to party. I like to picture Jesus as a ninja fighting off evil samurai. I like to think of Jesus like with giant eagle's wings and singing lead vocals for Leonard Skinner with like an angel band. And I'm in the front row, and I'm hammered for it. Hey, Cal, why don't you just shut up? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Dear eight pound, six ounce, newborn into Jesus. Don't even know a word yet. We just thank you for all the races I've won and the $21.2 million. Woo! 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 Ow! Love that money that I have accrued over this past season. Thank you for all your power and your grace, dear baby God. Amen. That's so like some of us that we have this fixed idea, not necessarily as a baby, but if we have an idea that Jesus is just a baby, then he can't be really Lord if he's only a baby. You know, we need to expand our understanding of who Jesus is. And um, so, uh, yeah, encourage everyone to get a copy of this book. Um, interestingly, after I wrote this book, I said to 
some people, I just feel like that's it. Like if I die tomorrow, my work is done. You know, I've, I've, I've uh, been obedient to what God has, has revealed to me and shared it. And uh, funnily enough, only not long after saying that, I was in a situation where I was, I thought I was going to take my last breath and I was like literally down to my last few breaths. And I said, God, is this it? He said, no, I've so much more for you. And since that day, God's given me um, uh, three books that I'm currently writing on. So um, this is just fresh revelation. And um, I'm so, uh, you know, just almost overwhelmed with um, the good things that God has in store. Um, so let's get into today's teaching. Um, it's a Bible teaching, and then I'll, I'll share a prophetic word. But um, we've been going through Elijah, the story of Elijah from 1 Kings, and we're up to chapter 19. This is where um, last week we, we saw Elijah afraid and running for his life. And he um, ditched his servant and kept on running into the wilderness, came down to a broom tree, a broom bush, sat down and said, God, I want to die. And that was it. He'd had enough. Um, he says, take my life. This is in, in chapter 19. Uh, what are we at? Verse 4. Take my life. I'm no better than my ancestors. Uh, when he says that, you know, there's actually no record that I can find in the Bible of his ancestors. Like we're not, we're not sure. There's no genealogy. We're not sure even what tribe he came from. Um, unless I'm mistaken, please let me know. Um, send us a, a message if I'm wrong. But I don't think he's even, it's, it's not even mentioned in the Bible who are his ancestors. In other words, they're nobody. So when he says, um, I'm no better than my ancestors, he's really saying, I'm a nobody. You know, I'm no great prophet. I'm, I'm, what am I even doing? He's, he's having a crisis of confidence, a crisis of belief in his calling. He's just, um, he's come from this absolute high adrenaline rush of calling fire down from heaven and, 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 um, and then going to almost a state of disbelief. You know, he's, he's had the power of God come on in him and he's run like Superman. And then I guess there's been this adrenaline drop and he's just gone into this uh, crisis state where he's had enough. Um, he says, uh, oh, and then he went to, to sleep under the bush. We have in verse five, all at once, an angel touched him and said, get up and eat. And he looked around. And there by his head was some bread baked over hot coals and a jar of water. He ate and drank and lay down again. You know, this is the activity of someone who has no motivation. <laughs> He's just mentally, physically, spiritually exhausted. He's like, ah, oh, there's an angel. He's brought me food. He eats it and then just goes back to sleep. And, you know, I know, I know the feeling. I've, I've been in a state of depression where it's like, I don't even feel like eating and then just eat and go to sleep. You know, you don't feel like doing anything. Um, so he didn't want to, he didn't even want to say to this God, what I say to this angel, what's God got to say? You know, he's not interested. This is, to him, the angel is a waiter coming to wait on him, give him food. That was uh, all he could do. The angel, verse 7 says, The angel of the Lord came back a second time, touched him, and said, Get up and eat, for the journey is too much for you. So he got up, ate and drank, strengthened by the food. So, to Elijah, this angel is no more than a, a waiter. He's not interested, you know, and I'm sure, I believe anyway, I won't say I'm sure, but I, I fully believe that if 
Elijah had said to the angel, has God got a word for me? The angel would have said, this is the plan. Because the angel didn't tell him. He just said, you've got a journey ahead of you. The angel didn't say where the journey was. Elijah's gone with an assumption, it looks like, it, because it says here, he traveled 40, nights, 40 days and 40 nights until he reached Horeb, the mountain of God. This is, um, you know, I've done some research where they believe Horeb is also another side of the Mount Sinai. Like when you're talking about the mountain of God, this is, you know, they're talking about the mountain where God came down and spoke to Moses and gave him the Ten Commandments. So it's almost like um, Elijah became obsessed to hear from God. He's, he's thought, um, I've got to go and meet with God. He wasn't satisfied with just hearing a message from an angel. Um, you know, and, and I believe this is a mistake here. This is, this is showing us, this is written down for us, not to say that we should become obsessed with hearing from God. It's more when God brings the ability for a message, it might just be simply reading the Bible, reading the word. Don't despise that. Don't be always seeking for this mountaintop experience. Okay, because sometimes God just wants us to, to take the message in whatever way it comes to us. Elijah was absolutely obsessed. Now, he'd eaten this supernatural food and somehow it's given him the ability to um, go on this. Um, I think it's the most amazing fast in the history of the world. He, he, it says for 40 days and 40 nights, he traveled. In other words, he didn't stop. You know, he fasted food, water, rest, and shelter. He just kept on going all the all the time for forty days and forty nights until he until he came to the mountain of God. This is the actions of someone obsessed. He's just thinking, I want to be in that same place that Moses was. For sure, I'll encounter God there. Maybe I can say to God, show me your glory and God can pass by me just like he did with Moses. And he, and he had this um, obsession to get to the mountain of God. Um, and sometimes the experience, if our obsession is with signs and wonders, encounters, they simply stop us from obeying the plan of God for our life. If that becomes our obsession, it can become an idol. Um, you know, it's almost like the mountain of God became the idol for Elijah. And he's like, at any cost, I'm getting there because I want to hear from God. But God's ability to communicate with Elijah was already there because he'd sent him a messenger. The messenger just wasn't there as a waiter. The messenger could have, you know, that messenger had a direct contact with God because he was from the kingdom of heaven. He was an envoy, a, a, a um a um, ambassador that God had sent directly. And Elijah's just like, um, nah, I want to hear from God himself. I'm going to get there. I'm I'll, for sure. Um, I'll go where he spent the night in a cave when he finally got there. Um, actually, I'm going to leave it there because I want this to be short and sharp. Okay, so... Um, I'm not saying signs and wonders are no something that we shouldn't be interested in. I mean, they can be a very powerful way of advancing the kingdom of God. But when, when we say, no, I can't do anything until I've had that mountaintop experience, then what happens is we're not doing the simple things like loving your neighbour. Um, you know, these are some of the, the simple things that God wants us to simply be doing. Um, you know, even with, you don't need a mountaintop experience to love your neighbor. You don't need a mountaintop experience 
to preach the gospel, to share the gospel. You don't have to wait till that. It's, it's, it's something simple that we can do. And, um, you know, when it's time, God will call us up that mountain. Okay, we don't have to climb up that mountain ourselves because that's striving in, in, in religious um, pursuit. You know, and God just wants us to be doing the simple things. And that just leads me into today's prophetic word for the world today, for the body of Christ today. It's defend the oppressed. Okay, it's a simple word, defend the oppressed. Um, God would say there's two classes of people in this world today. Um, one of them is severely oppressed. And if the body of Christ needs to be speaking out about this injustice, speaking out to the powers, speak out fearlessly, um, defending them, showing the, 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 them love, showing them that they're there to support them. And um, that's all I'm saying. Hear this word. It's a simple word, but you need to be doing it. Okay. This is um, fresh revelation from God. Take it as a prophetic word. Praise God. Hallelujah. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. God wants to get the word out. God wants his word out to his people. Okay, I'll leave it there.